In our previous video, Integration, we spoke about the power given to the beasts to enslave mankind, and that word Oz is both the I sword and I plow. We have shown that this power of the beast is AI, the second beast created from materials of the earth. The evil plan that they have has been done before and prophesied many, many times to help prevent this from reoccurring. But we fail to heed the warnings given to us and march forward to our own destruction. So what is this plan and what does it do to mankind? In every prophecy you will see the covering of Yahuwah being removed from man. This covering is the protective hand of the Father. The removal is referenced by three things, nakedness, baldness, and blindness. The prophecy given to Yochanan in Revelation is the same prophecy found all throughout Scripture, starting with the fall in the garden. To understand this, let's look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 in the Greek. Notice the first word used in Revelation is the word apocalypsis. Now, there are many translators out there calling the book of Revelation by the Hebrew word kason, but that isn't the title that's given to Revelation. The title is Apocalypsis. This word was used by the 70 Hebrew scholars that translated the Septuagint or LXX as the word. Well, let's talk about the word kason first. Kason was used in 1 Samuel 3.1 as a word vision. If we look at this in the Septuagint, the word for vision is the word harassus. Harassus is G36 or 3706. This word is a vision and it is used in Revelation but in Revelation 4 verse 3 and 9 verse 17 not used as the original title of Revelation. The Apocalypsis of Yahushua HaMashiach is the title of Revelation. Apocalypsis starts with the letter Alpha because Revelation is an odiote, meaning each chapter coincides with a Hebrew letter from Aleph to Tav, and the first chapter coincides with the Hebrew letter Aleph, which is where the letter Alpha comes from. Now if you take the first word of Apocalypse and find where it is used in the Greek Septuagint, you will find that it's used one time in 1 Samuel 20, 30. Now this word in 20, 30, notice 20, 30 is actually 23 if you take away the zeros. This word is nakedness. Strong's H6172. Now I'm going to show you why this word is prophetic. Although this word means nakedness, it's referring to the nakedness of mankind, meaning all sins of mankind will be uncovered and, be, and man will be naked. Now this word comes from ara. The word ara means to pour out to make bare or to uncover, to expose, reveal, like revelation. Now this word was used prophetic in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12, therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the plunder with the strong, because he poured out, that's the word, his life unto death, and was counted with the wrongdoers, yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the wrongdoers. Now this word means pouring out, but it also has another meaning as well. In Zephaniah 2:14, here, you can see that the word is used for the cedar work is uncovered. You could imagine that if you was to take off the walls of your house, you would be able to see everything inside the timber that's in your house, the piping, the plumbing, the wiring, and everything else. This is what the prophecy is about, the uncovering of everything 
in your soul. Using the Septuagint and the Blue Letter Bible app, I was able to take the Greek letters of Revelation or Greek words of Revelation and convert them to Hebrew words with their Strong's number beside them. The first word, Aruah, the pouring out of Yahushua HaMashiach. Now, Revelation is an odiote, so I wanted to do this so we, I could actually see the odiote in, he, in Hebrew. So if you go to the very next verse, who bore witness to the word of Elohim? The word who starts with the letter Aleph, is the word Ashar, Strong's H834. The next verse, 1 3, is blessed is he. The word blessed is Ashar, eight, H835. Ashar starts with Aleph. All right, so I am the Aleph and Tab. The word I am in Hebrew is Ani. I Yochanan, Ani, again. As you can see, many of these verses start with the letter Aleph. The word Apocalypsis comes from the Hebrew word Ara, which has the meaning of pouring out and exposure. To understand how this was used, let's look at Isaiah Yeshayahu 53 verse 12. He poured out his soul unto death. The prophecy of the Messiah the word Aruah is the action of pouring out of the Ruach HaKadosh, but also has the meaning of uncovering, but not of the Messiah, but of mankind. For this word is the word of judgment. Every sin will be exposed. All of man's covering will be removed. Yeshayahu Isaiah 53 Therefore I give him a portion among the great. He divides the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his being unto death, and he was counted with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Zephaniah, Zephaniah 2.14 And droves shall lie down in her midst. Every beast of the nation, both pelican and bittern, lodge in the tops of her columns. A voice singing at the window, ruin be at the threshold, for the cedar work is exposed. In this verse, the pelican and bittern are symbolic of demons indwelling man, and the cedar work is exposed without protection. Imagine the walls of your house being removed to expose all that is within. This is the removal of the covering of man, man giving over access to another spirit. The covering that is on man is the hand of Yahuwah. This hand is the hand of marriage. This is the retainer, the indwelling Ruach HaKadosh. The only way this hand can be removed is by divorce, as written in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction. The word for falling away is Greek Strong's G646, which means forsake. It is the same as Greek Strong's 647, which means divorce. It is divorce that separates man from the hand of Yahuwah. And notice that this chapter and verse is 2323. Job, whose real name in Hebrew is Ayub which means by the audio Yahuwah's hand on man's tent is prophetic of the remnant in the end of days. And when Yahuwah removed his hand from Ayub, many calamities came upon him. But when Ayub found out about his children's death, notice what it says. Ayub, Job 118. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their brother, their firstborn. And see, a great wind came from the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young men, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to inform you. Then Ayub rose up and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell to the ground and did obeisance. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I returned there. 
Yahuwah has given, and Yahuwah has taken away. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. And all this Ayub did not sin or ascribe wrongdoing unto Elohim. The hair is symbolic of the covering of Yahuwah on man. Baldness is a representation of man being stripped of this covering, and so is nakedness. It is normally accompanied by sackcloth in scripture. This is a representation of mourning, being naked and exposed. Let's look at examples of this. The first is when Yaakov was told that Yosef, his son, was dead. Bereshith, Genesis thirty-seven, thirty-three, And he recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. An evil beast has devoured him. Yosef is torn, torn to pieces. And Yaakov tore his garments and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son many days. Notice like Ayub, he tore his garment and was naked except for sackcloth around his waist. This act of being naked is an act of mourning before Yahuwah. The sackcloth is Hebrew Strong's 8242 sack, which means sack or sackcloth. It is a mesh material used for carrying grain, worn in mourning and humiliation. It is made of mesh, meaning your nakedness isn't covered, and the sackcloth being made of mesh represents the grain having the last little bit of dirt that is sifted out to make it clean. It is like saying to the Father to sift out the last little dirt of our soul. Here's another example. Yeshayahu, Isaiah 32:11. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Be troubled, you complacent ones. Strip yourselves, make yourselves bare, and gird sackcloth on your waist. Notice again, sackcloth is only on the waist. And notice that they are naked. Amos 8.10 And shall turn your festivals into mourning and your songs into lamentation and bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head and shall make it like mourning for an only son and its end like the day of bitterness. Notice not only are they naked with sackcloth around their waist but they are also bald. This in the spirit is the act of being without the covering of Yahuwah. Yeshayahu Isaiah 3 9 The look on their faces witness against them and they declare their sin as Saddam. They do not hide it. Woe to their being for they have brought evil upon themselves. Therefore Yahuwah shall smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yahuwah exposed their nakedness. And it shall be instead of a sweet fragrance, a smell of decay, and instead of a belt, a rope, instead of well-set hair, baldness, instead of a festival robe, a girding of sackcloth, and branding instead of loveliness. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your strength in battle, and her gates shall lament and mourn and she, deserted, shall sit on the ground. Baldness represents the removal of the covering. When the covering is removed, man's sins are laid bare for all to see. This is the shame of sin that is to come. For when Adam and Eve gave access to the serpent, they were made naked, and in their shame they put on an apron of fig leaves. Just like sackcloth, this act of humiliation was brought on by the serpent and has been his plan all along to separate mankind from the hand of Yahuwah and to expose all of our sins. Bereshith, Genesis 3-4 And the Nakash said to the woman, You shall certainly not die, for Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. First, the word nakash is the same word used in Revelation chapter thirteen, eleven. And I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. The word dragon is the Hebrew word nakash. 
The second beast spoke as the Nakash, making promises to mankind. First, the name Nakash is Noon Chet Shin. This would have an odio meaning of an everlasting covering of divine power. This coincides with Ezekiel 28, 14. And you were the anointed cherub that covered. And I placed you, and you were on the set-apart mountain of Elohim. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. For it is he who has a great understanding of this covering that plans to have it removed from man, leaving mankind naked, bald, and exposed. For without this covering, man is unprotected like a city without walls. Mishle, Proverbs twenty-five, twenty-eight. A man who has no control over his spirit is like a broken down city without a wall. Bereshev, Genesis 3.6 and the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Notice that this is chapter 3, verse 6, and we know what the three sixes represent. Now the Hebrew gives us a better understanding of what she wanted to gain. The word for I is Ayin, Strong's 5869, that also means knowledge and to think best. And the word for desirable is Strong's 2530, Hamad, which means to covet. So she coveted this power. But what is this power? The power was to make one wise. The word for this is Sakal, Strong's 7919. This word means to be prudent, consider, expert, instruct. This word also means intelligent. This power made them more intelligent. They wanted this technology just as society does right now and has embraced artificial intelligence to make themselves wiser, to know the thoughts of others. But by the taking of this forbidden fruit, they were left naked. Bereshev Genesis 3.7 then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings for themselves. Notice they made loin coverings. This is the same as sackcloth as we've seen in previous verses. They opened the all-seeing eye. They realized that now they were naked. The word used for naked is a room. The same word used to describe the serpent in verse 1. By taking of this technology inside of them, they have inadvertently given over power to the serpent. This made them one with the serpent, just as in Revelation 17:13, They have one mind, and they shall give their power and authority to the beast. The story of Samson and Delilah is prophetic of the end, and it has many parallels to the book of Job. Shopatim, Judges 16:16, 16, 16. And it came to be when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his being was wearied to death, that he made known to her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to Elohim from my mother's womb. If I were shaven, then my strength would leave me, and I would be weak as any other man. And Delilah saw that he had made known to her all his heart. And she sent and called for the princes of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has made known to me all his heart. So the princes of the Philistine came up to her and brought the silver in their hand. Delilah is spelled Dalet Lamed Yod Lamed He, and the Hebrew word for darkness or night is Lila which also means a twist. And the name Dalala starts with Dalet and ends with the letter He, the letter that means spirit. Therefore, Dalala's name means the door of the dark spirit or doorway to the dark spirit. Now notice it says that all that was in his heart was revealed to her and she used this to lead him into captivity. 
just as in the end when mankind's sins will be revealed and they will use it against us. Shopatim, Judges 16, 19. And she made him sleep on her knees and called for a man and shaved off the seven locks of his head. Thus she began to humble him and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Shimshon. And he woke from his sleep and said, Let me go out as before at other times and shake myself loose. But he did not know that Yahuwah had turned aside from him. The Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Aza and bound him with bronze shackles and he became a grinder in the prison. Once he was shaven bald, the Ruach of Yahuwah left him. This is the hand of Yahuwah, the retainer as spoken in Thessalonians. Notice that they put out his eyes. This is symbolic of being spiritually blinded. And they brought him down to Gaza, a word that means wickedness separated from the Ruach. The word Aza is Ayin Zayin, the word Az, the same word used as the power given to the beast in Revelation, the Az spirit. And they bound him with bronze shackles. The word used in this passage for bronze is Strong's 5178 Nekoset which is copper or bronze, and it means filthiness. This word comes from Strong's 5153 Nakash, the same name as the serpent in the garden. But just as in the garden where the father made Adam and Eve coverings, and the book of Job where the father blesses him after he overcome, the father's Ruach returns to cover Samson, and Samson's strength returns. Shopatim Judges 16.28 And Shimshon called to Yahuwah, saying, O Master Yahuwah, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, only this time, O Elohim, and let me avenge myself on the Philistines with vengeance for my two eyes. And Shimshon took hold of the two middle columns which supported the house, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. And Shimshon said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself mightily, and the house fell on all the princes and all the people in it. And the dead that he killed at his death were more than he killed in his life. Baldness represents the covering of Yahuwah. When the covering is removed, man's sins are laid bare for all to see. This is the shame of sin that is to come. For when Adam and Eve gave access to the serpent, they were made naked, and their shame, and in their shame they put on an apron of figs. Satan wants to remove man's covering represented by baldness and nakedness, so that man's sins are laid bare for all to see. This is the shame of sin. From the Kosh in the garden to Nakash the Amorite wanting to gouge out the right eye in 1 Samuel 11.3 to nakedness in Revelation. To separate mankind from the hand of Yahuwah and to expose all of our sins. Yahusha told us that this would come. Lucas Luke 8.17 For whatever is hidden shall be revealed and whatever is secret shall be known and come to light. Chasson, Revelation 1 7. See, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him. Yes, amen. Mourning in sackcloth because of the shame of their nakedness. It is enough for man to be judged by his actions, but worse to be judged by his thoughts. This is why I believe our Adon told us to let our yes be yes and our no be no. Confessing our wickedness in truth, the beast system of AI will make all mankind naked and bald, exposed without a covering, with nothing to cover our shame. This is brought forth by surveillance under the skin, giving access to 23, our Vulcan, the god of artificial intelligence which we know is nothing more than a way for unclean spirits to speak to mankind. 
It is not a coincidence that Yahusha, Joshua, in chapter 8, when Yahuwah was with Israel, they defeated Ai, a word pronounced I in Hebrew. Strong's H, 5857. I, I. Yahusha, Joshua, 828. And Yahusha burned Ai and made it a heap forever, a ruin to this day. And he hanged the sovereign of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset, Yahusha commanded that you take his corpse down from the tree and throw it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raised over it a great heap of stones to this day. And Yahusha built a slaughter place to Yahuwah Elohim of Israel in Mount Ibal. Ibal is the mountain of the curse as mentioned in Deuteronomy 11.29. And it shall be when Yahuwah your Elohim has brought you into the land which you go to possess that you shall put the blessings on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ibal. After Yahusha destroyed the city of Ai, the word for city in this passage is Er, Ain Yod Resh. And who is the prince and power of the Er? When the city was destroyed by Yahusha, he took the king of Ai and hung him on the tree. This is the curse of Mount Ibal. The word for eyeball is Hebrew Strong's 5858 and has the meaning of being bald. For this is the plan of Satan all along to take away your covering and to leave you bald, naked, exposing mankind's shame. Kasson Revelation 13:16 And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, and free and slave to be given a mark upon their right hand or upon their foreheads, and that no one should be able to buy or sell except he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 23 is the number of his name. The word for beast can be traced back to the LXX as the Hebrew word chat. Does that sound familiar? The word for beast is therion, Greek Strong's 2342. See, there is that number again. The number 666 can be expressed by 66.6%, which is two-thirds. Like the legend of Gilgamesh, who was said to be Nimrod himself, that was two-thirds God and one-third man. Also in this passage, the word for number of his name is onomatos. Greek Strong's 3686, which if you add those numbers, 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 6 equals 23, which we know equals pharmacy. This is how they get the technology in you. For in Revelation 18.23, the number 18 is three sixes, and the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore at all. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more at all. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth. For by your drug sorcery all the nations were led astray. In our previous videos we have covered how the letters Chai, Zai, Stigma, commonly translated as 666, is a formula that equals Rx. The symbol for pharmacy. And if you stack the letters, it also has the symbol of pharmacy. I am showing you this for a reason, so bear with me, please. We know that the letter Gayin is the 23rd letter, a fallen letter that still exists in Arabic as the left eye to the letter Ayin. And it is in the form of twisted ropes, which means wickedness which is exactly the shape of the Caduceus staff that belongs to both Hermes and Mercury. And if you Google Mercury, you will see that he is associated with the number 5, which is the sum of the letters 2 plus 3. 23 and the letter Gain is the 23rd letter. Now let's look again at the letters Chai, Xi, Stigma. 
This is Chaza Stigma in Greek. If we take this image and we rotate it horizontally, you will see the number right here, 23. 23. 23. 23x, the covenant of the wicked one. 23x can be expressed by the letters Gain Ta, which has the meaning of a wicked covenant. And as you can see, it is in the same symbol as Pharmakeia. Have you ever wondered why all popular hand symbols represent the number 23? From the peace symbol to the OK symbol and even the devil horn symbols are all variations of 23. This is on purpose. They know the plans that they have for us. Ever wonder why the acronym OK is the most popular phrase in existence? And have you ever wondered why Elisha sent a bear to kill some youths for mocking him, for calling him bald head? Maybe there's more to this story. Let's look at this account again, for in the Hebrew it tells a different story.